Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. We are back again with another OWASP Spotlight series, and we have a very special project with us today, OWASP Application Security Verification Standard, which is ASVS. This project I wanted to cover for so long and wanted to invite Daniel Cutford on the episode. So here we are. We have Daniel with us. Thank you so much, Daniel, for joining me today. Pleasure. I'm looking forward to doing this, and I'm glad that somebody's paying some interest to our little, our little thing. Thank you. So, Daniel, how did we start the project? Uh, what the project is all about for the people who don't know about it? The ASVS, uh, besides having the world's longest name that everybody struggles with, um, the idea initially was to normalize how and when application security tests happened. So you would, you would have an application and you say, right, I need to get it pen tested. And you'd go out to the market and people say, I can pen test that web app. And you pray that they actually knew what they were doing and you'd get a report. The problem there was that there was no seriously defined methodology of what constituted a secure application and also how you would test about that. So say me as a customer, I have no idea that the person doing the testing was doing the kind of testing and I expect. And it was just a mess. And that's where the ASPS was born. It was the idea of normalizing the re relationship between, say, you, the tester, and me, the client, to understand, right, I have an application. I want it tested this way. Show me that you've done it that way. And at the same time, you can use it for building applications to say, um, I want an application that is robust and secure. Well, handily, ASVS has three levels. We built it to be level one compliant or level two compliant. And that was it. And the project has grown a hell of a lot over the years. Um, you know, if you look at version one to the way we are, version 403 at the moment, it, it's a light year of difference. But it's it's well received and it's lovely to hear people using it. And I use it in my day job and a lot of people do. So it's good to see how the project's grown and matured. Sure. So can we take a quick look at the project? Sure, please do. Great. So for everyone here, we can go, go to ovast.org and can browse all the projects. And ASVS is part of the flagship project. And here we are. So here we are uh, looking at the application security verification standard. Over to you, Daniel. Yeah. So. There's, there's many a way you can use the ASVS. Um, I think for the best part, what we recommend is people make use of the markdown in GitHub. Because a lot of people, when they first start to use ASVS, they look at the three levels, and there are three levels. Level one, which should be mostly automated and easy to kind of achieve. There's level two, and that's what we feel an application on the internet today should be. And then there's level three. And level three is the top tier. It's, it's really meant for a small subset of applications where, you know, they're really, really important. Uh, water processing, something that could actually harm somebody. It's, it's a very hard level to get, but it's kind of where you're at. Now, one of the biggest changes we did with ASVS is we moved away from a legacy protocol such as Word. We embraced GitHub. And I think this was single-handedly the best thing that we ever did because one, it made it more accessible to the entire community. And whilst ASVS has got uh, project leaders, and I, I really use that term loosely because to be fair, the ASVS is driven by the community. Um, Andrew, Jim, Josh, and I, we just kind of help where possible, but the community here is the, the champion of the standard. It's, it's their standard. And they go through and find issues and do issue tickets and do pull requests. And this is the, the most amazing thing for me is to see how much this community has driven the standard. But if you go back to the main route, everything we do now is in Markdown. And this is really important because we wanted to make it open and accessible to all. And it means that people can integrate it. Now, when you have the ASVS, one of the biggest problems people first have is they go, oh my God, there's, there's literally too much for me to do. And that's not how we want you to use the ASVS. Ideally, we want you to look at what you're building and what you're testing. Do the, the basics, threat modeling. Like we've been talking about threat modeling for a very long time. We had it in the OWASP testing guide in version one in what, 2003. And finally, the industry is getting used to the idea of threat modeling now. We're saying do a threat model, 
And then based off that threat model and how the application is and what it does, work out which sections of the ASVS apply to your application or your API, whatever you're building, and use that. And that's where the markdown really, really works. Now we do supply the normal legacy style documents, if I'm using that term correctly, the PDFs, the words, the CSVs. Um, but ideally, if you want the most up-to-date version, we would say use the markdown in GitHub and go from there. And indeed, like, please, if you see issues with it, raise an issue. If you want to have a change, do a pull request. And I think that's where you can see most of the content there. It's, it's such a community-driven thing. Wow, that's that's amazing. I think there are so many things which I hear uh, as part of the project and we can see that many versions are there which people can take help from and leverage. Yep. So now, um, can people start using it and then can build on top of it their own checklist? Yes, they can. Uh, and indeed, that's what we want it to be. Like we've said, hey, this is what we think constitutes an application from a robust secure engineering perspective today, but by all means, it's not a, you must follow this, use and modify and fork it as you see fit. And I think a lot of people have, and that's the biggest advice is use and fork as much as you need. All right, I think I have it already. There you go. I'm a huge fan of the project. Thank you. Great, so, um, so the latest version is 4.0.2, right? Yep. So how can people contribute to the project and how can people support the project or maybe provide their inputs? Easiest thing is if you click on the issues tab, you will see that the power of the community here. Um, and that's how most people are contributing now. They are looking at certain requirements or language or structure and they're saying, hey, this is missing or this doesn't make sense or I think we need to clarify this a bit better. And one of the big pushes that we'll be doing soon is we are going to be getting rid of a lot of these issues. We're moving into effectively version five. Now, one of the key things that we're very cautious about is the standards shouldn't change all the time. Um, you know, it's we're, we're big fans of the move fast, break stuff movement, but you should be making sure that the standard is stable for people to adopt it. So we don't just rap, rapidly go through and change stuff. One of the things we want to do is take on board what people are saying and what people are suggesting. And like I said before, this is a community standard. So if you want to get involved, create the new issue and say, listen, I don't like this, or I think this could be done in a better way. Add an issue and we, we do look at it. Um, we are all volunteers. So, you know, the last 18 months has been, it's been a challenging time for everybody. So, you know, we've, we've all tried to balance work, life, being locked up and all that kind of stuff. But we do read all these issues and please, like we, we really do value it. Right. I think that's really, really helpful. And I am sure people who get to know more about the project, they will look at the issues and will uh, make requests of changes, uh, be it a language change, be it any support document, be it something that can be added to the ASVS when the new version is set to release. So do we have any tentative like timeline when uh, people can expect the new version? I'm not going to commit to anything. There's a lot of work ahead. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it, it's being planned. That's all I want to say. Sure. Thank you so much, Daniel. I think this is really, really helpful. And uh, people can take a look at the documents that are there and uh, uh, like all the markdowns which are there. So I use a lot of markdown, so I run all of these locally, but for the people who don't use it, who wants to use like the, the, uh, the older things like CSV word, PDF, they can look at your, you can just go here and you can download it. You can uh, take out the data. Similarly, you can download it in the Word document. The Word will be downloaded and it will open. Uh, so all the details will be here. Let me stop sharing. So just just go ahead uh, explore the project. It's one amazing project that has helped me and many people um, in making the checklist, using it so that we don't miss out on things when we are performing a security testing. And, and we, we'd love to hear how you use it. Um, that, that's one of the things that I think all of us, you know, 
tell us how you're using it. You don't have to give away any situation, but say, hey, we're using it for this um, because it means a lot to us so we can understand how to make it better. But um, yeah, I'm really glad people are using it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Daniel, for joining me today and sharing all the wonderful insights about the project. Thank you very much for having me.